All right, we're gonna lay these out. All right, so this kit, I can tell, is being built for a customer that wants a Ender 500 that does not have a printer that he's going to donate. So we have, let me see if I can get through this here. This bar is the x-axis. We have two holes spaced about that far apart. I think it's like 38 millimeters. And on the opposite end, this is the motor side. And this hole is for the in-stop switch. So that's what this looks like. We've got two holes here. Two here, plus the in-stop. All right, so that's the x axis then we have uh let's see if i can remember this boy this is... okay so these are the left this is the left side right so these are these bars left bottom right bottom and they will attach with this hole facing down your screw goes up into the corner right here all right and then these holes are for uh rubber feet and then these holes right here mount to this bracket which is these guys we're gonna have four of these one, two, three, four. They should all be the same with the same hole patterns, right? Get them all laid out. Okay, here you go. Four identical pieces. And they're going to mount to the top and the bottom with an M5 screw on each end. You'll see it's over here and over here. And then your rod mounts will mount to it. All right, so that's that. Let's see, I got that covered. I got these guys covered. Let's put that aside. Now, we're going to have two to have the ends notched out. Now, you do have to be careful because the ends are not identical so on one end you're going to have two holes for this mount and on this end these are not holes these are t-slot nuts so we look for that and goes like now there's a third hole right there that's for your corner bracket if you're using a um, Ender 5 Plus. If you're not, then don't worry about it because we have these 3D printed corner brackets that work pretty well. You can, of course, buy the metal corner brackets, but they all they come in different sizes, so you just have to... Um, if I can find them, I will uh, put them in the build of materials. All right, so those are the left and right y-axis. This is the y-axis going back and forth, All right? Next, we have, uh, I guess we could call out the z-axis, which is pretty simple. It's gonna be four 
same sized extrusions, 2040s, they'll have the ends tapped. And you'll have a hole right here for each one. And that hole goes, which way does that go? Okay, it goes up on the top for this screw right here. You have one here, and you have one here, both sides. So the hole faces out at the top. That's your Z-axis. Now, if you're using Ender 5 Plus or you're just using a stock height Ender 5, you won't have these at all. If you're buying a complete uh, kit, you'll have these. Or the 500 Z height, you'll have those. All right, next up we have the bed mounts. Okay, so the bed mounts mount across these brackets. Now, right here, I'm showing these are aluminum, but I think I should use steel. So once I run out of these aluminum ones, I'll be using steel. Um, didn't realize that the Ender 5 Plus has steel, not aluminum. So, because it's black and I didn't check it. So you got two M4 or M5. I think those are, these are actually M4. The threads are M4. And these cutouts are for the silicone mounts for the bed. So you just go like that, just like that. Now we'll have, um, you can dance around a little bit and if I can get over to this other one, this assembly right here, right? Um, so this one only has one set of holes, but I think my newer brackets have two sets. You can actually see the second set right there. So it depends on which printer you have. Um, if you have the Ender 5 Plus, it'll be the outer holes. I'm just not, because the Ender 5 Plus doesn't use really exactly a rectangular bed pattern or bolt pattern. And um, it's a little bit shorter on one end, on one direction than it is on the other, like this way, it's shorter. But, anywho, you'll figure it out. And then, just like that, and then your brass nuts for your lead screws go through here. I don't think we've got this on yet. And then your bearing blocks are mount like this to these guys. All the hardware is included in the full kits. If you're upgrading from an Ender 5 Plus, all this hardware is already in your printer. All right, so what else we got here? All right, the last four is the front and rear, top and bottom 2020s. So there's gonna be one that has double holes. That's for that motor mount. And that's this guy right here so here's your rear and then this is the front bottom for the stock Ender 5 plus these holes right here are for the uh, box you see this box right here this is the Ender 5 box and these holes right here attached to that I think wait nope I think those are the wrong size Oh, this is for the Ender 5, not the Ender 5 Plus. So these holes match up to the Ender 5 box, which is right there. And so when it goes like this, that hole and that hole is tapped. So you can mount your box like this actually. And I have little feet that I printed keeps it level so you put it like that so you can use the stock box but I decided because I want to design an enclosure that attaches to the frame and I'll have a cutout for this somehow I don't know about that switch kind of in the way but I would like to have a enclosure that comes up to here 
and goes around it. But I'm gonna have to do something about that switch. Maybe I'll put the switch on the lid. There's a cutout here on this corner. Have it facing this way. That's just future food for thought. And then, so we got our front, our rear, our lefty, and I think the left and right are identical. Yeah, they're identical. So they go like that. So it's bottom, or this is bottom, wait a minute, I'm sorry, no, okay. So bottom, top, Uh, bottom top bottom top 2020s all right so in a nutshell I have four 2020s like so bottom top front and back may or may not have the z-axis definitely will have these two notched pieces for your y-axis and then these two guys is for what is that for? Uh, oh, left and right bottom. This is left and right bottom, and then these four characters are for mounting the Z carriage assembly right here, top and bottom, and then you have your X axis, it has your three holes in one end. Two holes on the other. Now, um, here's a partially assembled unit. All right, so here we got our X axis. These are our top and bottom four pieces. Now, one little trick to re uh, let's see these left and right Y axis. The holes are offset less on the front than they are on the rear because the y-axis goes to the back. It needs more space back here. So these are offset more to the rear than they are to the front. So smaller gap, you want the small gap to the front. All right, and I've got this STL for this cube on Thingiverse. It really helps to stiffen up the frame I also use the cube for the feet at the bottom. And then we have these uh, Z motor mounts. Uh, the 4234s seem to work fine. I don't have any problems with that on uh, the bigger printers. Um, this guy right here is a different story. I use 4260s on him. But at any rate, so I just wanted to give you guys a good overall picture of how this thing goes together and just to review we got our top or bottom left and right motors and that's about it all right holler at me on uh, facebook or email if you have any problems